Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to Wilder Hope Adventures. If you've never come across our videos before, my name is CJ. Just down to my left here are my two border collies, Cody and Kai. And we are currently exploring the, lake, the Peak District, not Lake District, Peak District. Um, and today we are here in the little village of Sheldon, which is the cutest little place. Um, lots of little rock built houses. Uh, but we're here to go check out the magpie mine. Ah, oh, looks like we got a cow field to deal with, but it doesn't look too bad. But we got to get over this. I have a feeling we're gonna get a little bit wet. It's got some rain clouds coming in. But the mine's only just up here, so we're not too far away. If I'd have realized we had some rain showers coming in, I probably would have thrown my waterproof on. I'm hoping they're not gonna be too bad. So we're standing in what would have been one of the main mine buildings. We're just hiding out a bit from the rain right now. Um, but kind of cool to see, but no roof left, but this would have probably been the main processing or the main working facilities of the mine. And I don't, I'm assuming it's probably another, a lead mine, um, since that's what most of them are around here. So what we're seeing behind us is the main shaft of the Magpie Mine and the shaft is 250 meters deep or no, 222 meters deep, 728 feet deep and you can see to either side the workings that would have brought the lead out of the mine. Um, and lead was mined here for about 250 years um, and this is like the best preserved mine, uh, lead mine in the Peak District so it's well worth coming to check out. All across the landscape you can see the pilings and then we got some another workings up here over here but all the pilings that probably came out that were basically useless so it's not just this beautiful well-preserved mine that is worth coming up for it's literally half a kilometer from the parking you know you park in the village but these views out here are to, you know beautiful the Derbyshire, Derbyshire Dales on the Peak District National Park I'm, All right, we're getting back to Sheldon. So with that done, I think we're gonna go get a cheeky pint or half pint in the pub, because it looks really nice. Can't believe how quiet this is on a Sunday, but look, you've got one of these, the old um, British um, telephone boxes, but it's now contains a defibrillator, and I think that's a brilliant use of that. So anyway, guys, we're gonna, Cheers to you, I'm gonna enjoy this, chill a while, and then uh, we'll head off to one of the deep dales, or one of the dales. So we find ourselves, this is where we camped at last night, and it was, yeah, it's pretty nice. There's no views, we're stuck in the trees. But we went for a quick walk along this, and then uh, we found some beautiful views. So this is the way we're going this morning. We're starting off in Crestbrook Dale, uh, and I found, after looking at our west maps, a really nice loop that basically takes us up this trail uh, over to Lytton, down, um, I can't remember the name of the dale, and then onto the Monsell Trail, where there's a couple of tunnels that I've wanted to check out. So Crestbrook Dale is, and it's, it is a nature reserve, is one of five dales that makes up the, the Derbyshire Dales, uh, along with Lathkill Dale, Monsell Dale, D 
deep dale I, I, I think and can't remember the name of the other one but so we've come down from where we parked the only bad thing about coming down is we're now to climb back up again but i'm seeing blue skies and after the rocking storm we had last night thunder and lightning torrential rain that's gonna be nice but i tell you it's times like that i really appreciate car camping rather than being in a tent So I'm guessing that this is another limestone dale. The water is below the surface, but this is where that water would be flowing through. And it's interesting, it's such a different feel from Lathkill Dale. We've got walls that have been built either side of this, river, this, this brook. Um, and a tree, trees growing right in the middle of it, which is kind of strange. But I'm guessing they adapted to be that way because the water is, is lower. Yeah, it's just a very different feel. It feels a little bit more like what I would call Mirkwood than, uh, you know, Rivendell or something. What a beautiful valley. This is gorgeous. So this, also, this has definitely got some livestock in up, but I think they're all up top. Um, so it's definitely been a while, but this is absolutely gorgeous coming through here. So once we get to the end of the valley, we do have to climb up and out of it, which is a bit of a steep climb, um, but we've obviously been climbing gradually as we've been following Cress, Cresswell Brook. But uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a bit of a, a good one. Walking up this valley, this dale, looking at the edges of these rocks, here, here, where the tree's growing, you can see exactly why that water sinks so much and rivers are only above the level of the land when they're, uh, you know, it's in high, high flow because the cracks are just all the way down. You shall not pass. Well, I might say that if it was cows, but these guys are sheep and they're getting out of our way. Something I think it's always really important to remember, even though you're hiking that way, to so stop, turn around and look where you've come from because sometimes the best views could be behind you. You know, plus it gives you a really good excuse to uh, stop for breath. I think we're being watched. I don't think these guys would bother us, but I think I'm really glad I'm not taking that trail. Which would be that one into Lytton. In fact, even if we went over, I bet they'd barely even look at us. They're just sort of like, meh, life is cool. They're ignoring me even though I'm talking to them. Hey girls. See, couldn't even care less that I'm right here. I think this one over here is actually snoring. So unfortunately, because I know where I want to come out uh, with a bridge over the Montel Trail, we're having to do a little bit of road walking. Thankfully, very quiet roads. And uh, even though it's a road, some pretty epic views. So this little cutie, I wouldn't mind walking through the field with, but he's little and there's only a couple of them. 
and he's not even interested in us. Or she, sorry, she. So I believe, I don't know what this little village is called, but it's like more like a hamlet. Um, but this is Millerdale that we are now in. I'm just trying to figure out how to cross the creek because there is a bridge and I think I'll walk right by it. Um, but man, this is so quaint, so cute. I love places like this. But what's crazy is the first water river, that we, dale that we walk down. So it's got a fair degree of water in it. So there was an old mill here and what we're standing on right here is where they would have controlled the water coming into. Um, you can see the old wheels from the old metalwork and how they just channeled this down along one side so that it would power the water wheel uh, to power the mill. So we made it, we are now on the Monsal Trail. And as you can see, looking behind me, it's a very wide open track. And the reason for this is, is this is an old rail bed. Now I don't know where it went to and from, but I'll find out and put it below. Um, but that also means that the gradients aren't too bad. It's super amazing for, for cyclists. It's great for uh, anybody with buggies, wheelchairs. It's just a really beautiful area to get off road. So great for gravel biking too. Apparently they're warning us that there's a tunnel here because, you know, I couldn't tell that. So this first tunnel is the Lytton Tunnel and they do warn you about not touching the sides and stuff like that. I'm sure it's pretty delicate. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's too many places in the country where you can actually walk through an old disused tunnel. I know they've got them blocked off on the North Downs Way. But this is very, very cool. So you've got all these little spots, I don't know if you can see that behind me, where, you know, if men were working in here, that uh, they could nip into those when a train passed. So what's really cool about in here is you can see all different kinds of brickwork that, so you got some newer stuff, some older stuff, some red brick, some brown brick, and some along the bottom, we've got some of the, probably the native stone. But it's so patchworky and so different. It's probably why it's no longer used. Just get into the end of the tunnel, coming out into the sunshine for about 30 seconds, well, three minutes, and then we are going into the Crestbrook Tunnel. So, yeah, we're, this has been a really, really cool experience and definitely, definitely unique. This has been a great um, loop to do. I've, we've seen lovely green dry stone walled fields. We've gone through tunnels. We've gone up dales. Um, we've seen limestone rivers. And so guys, I'm gonna leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So as always, take care of yourself, take care of your mental health, and thanks for watching.